everyone. I'm Edith Thomas from Union TV, and welcome to another great episode of Talking with E, where we like to sit down and get to know the people in our town, our town itself, and wonderful things happening. So I know it looks a little different. We are not in the studio today. We are actually getting to stop by the wonderful, great, beautiful, as you can see, storefront NJ Arts World. And I'm here with the one and only owner, arts collector, and distributor, Arthur J. Pickney the third. I recently found out. Hi, Arthur. How are we doing today? How are you? I'm doing great. I'm happy to be here. Thank you so much for having me. First time in here, too. <laughs> How's everything today? You excited? Everything is good, yes. And I am excited. It's, oh. it's, it's good to be here. Awesome. So I know I've known you for a couple of years now from all the events happening in town and you just being a social butterfly. <laughs> but for the people watching at home who don't really know or aren't really familiar with, why don't you give us just a brief background of yourself? Professional background, story. Let's hear it. Okay. Uh I've been in this business uh, a little over 30 years, and actually I started uh, in Patterson uh, on the, uh, uh, we did start, I started working with a company that distributed artwork for the government. Okay. And they did all of the Army bases, Navy bases, Air Force bases. Uh, VA hospitals, anything that had to do with government procurement, uh, they did it around the world. So it was a pretty huge operation. And that's where I learned to uh, do the framing. And, you know, that's where I learned to, to uh, about art, mm -hmm. first seeing art. Mm -hmm. uh, I think one of the most amazing things that happened to me there is that... Uh, I was introduced to African American art. Okay. And uh, it was an African American operation. It was not, you know, it was uh, it. It was something that I found out by being there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it was pretty interesting, and uh, I was pretty excited. And that was back in the era era where Bill Cosby was having his television show, mm -hmm. and just about every African American show that you saw carried African-American art. It did. You know, living single, mm -hmm. you know, the whole nine, everything, everything was there. Uh, so it was pretty interesting. It was a pretty interesting start. And, and just as, as a footnote, that's, in the beginning, that's pretty much how I decided what kind of art I was going to carry. I looked at those shows, whatever they had, that's what I that's bought. What you <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so would you say that's what really sparked your interest in art or did it come even before working? For that organization? No, that sparked my interest in art. Um, like I said, I was pretty excited um, because actually I think most people didn't even know uh, that African American art existed. existed. And I was one of them, to mm -hmm. be quite honest with you. And, mm -hmm. and when I saw it, it kind of uh, kind of floored me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, Pretty much, that's where I started. And how long ago was that? I didn't catch that. Uh, about 30 years ago. So you've been doing art for about 30 years? Yeah, a little over 30 years. Just about as long as I've uh, been born. <laughs> 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 um, so I want to ask, because I know uh, NJ Arts World didn't start here in Union. No. So no. there's a background behind that. Tell yeah, me that. We started in Patterson, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. um, when I first uh, started, we uh, basically... I actually sold art on the street corners in Patterson with a uh, vendor's permit. And, oh, wow. You know, and people were excited. There was a lot of people that already knew about it, um, even though I didn't at mm -hmm. the time. Mm -hmm. So those people were probably my, my, my best customers. And, and then plus the fact, I had a, a friend of mine who, uh, a young Spanish guy, mm -hmm. he worked with me. So we were able to actually cross culture okay we did a lot of uh uh spanish people at that time were more interested in the religious aspect of art like the last suppers and that sort of thing mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so you know georgie and i was we we went out there and and we, we just sold it we, we you know and i think we did that for I'm going to probably say about two years. Oh, wow. And I love that you bring that up because I feel like that's an interesting thing to know. 
you couldn't find this art anywhere. If you wanted a specific type of, especially the beautiful ones that you have, but if you wanted a specific type of art, you weren't going to find it in your local, I don't even know where they sell art, but if you're in home your local, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. In your it, home goods or it, your TJ Maxx, yes. you're not finding art like this. Not like this. And especially that, that's, back in the day. That's probably one of the reasons why I gravitated towards this type of art. And there's, there's a lot of art out there. Mm -hmm. You know, I have, you know, this is not even the tip of the iceberg of the art that I have. Mm -hmm. I have artwork that you probably haven't seen in 20, 25 years. Mm, wow. So I, you know, I have, I have a lot of artwork. Mm -hmm. uh, but one of the things that, that made me stabilize in this sector is that you couldn't find it out there. Yeah. Um, you know, in, you know, like you said, the, the uh, local sources where people go to buy art. Definitely. So I'm going to come back to the art aspect, but let's also touch on this isn't just about, our, NJ Arts World isn't just about buying art. You also do framing here. Yes, we Tell do. Tell me about custom framing. Tell me about that. Yes, we do. Uh, custom framing. Um, we have a variety of frames, as you can see mm -hmm. on this, uh, but oh, there's okay. a lot more. I have more on this side, mm -hmm. and there's actually tons of different types of styles of frames that mm -hmm. you can get, mm -hmm. um, you know. We do the matting, we do the framing, we do the glazing, we do, you know, we, you know, we do everything. We also stretch canvas. And sometimes we do a, we can go and do a little exotic type of, uh, type of framing if that's what you're interested in. Okay, so uh, exotic, what do you mean? Like well, if you look to your left right there, you'll see two people, mm -hmm. the way the mats cut. Oh, I uh, get you. And something like that. Mm -hmm. And then if you look to your right over here, mm -hmm. you'll see... Um, you'll see what's called on the bottom, yeah. you'll see what's called a, a fillet. Mm -hmm. So that's actually wood on the inside of a frame. Oh, wow. So we take a piece, we actually frame it with that. So it looks, it, it really gives it a distinct type It of does, yeah. it does, especially with the layers. Yes. I love that. So now say if I wanted something custom, like um, my son, I don't have a son, but my son um, had a jersey and he wanted to frame his jersey along with the medals that he received for his entire senior year. Would I be able to come here and do, get that done? Of course. Oh, well, I most certainly. That. I had a, a gentleman to bring in uh, all of uh, Michael uh, Jordan's jersey. He had the Wizards jersey. He had the Bulls jersey. He had, the, um, you know, he had all of his jerseys, mm -hmm. probably seven in total. And he wanted to frame it. Mm -hmm. It was all signed by Michael Jordan. Yeah, that's so, a true fan. <laughs> yeah, and I actually have the photos of it where people can actually take a look and mm -hmm. see what type of a style they want. Because there's, certain, there's a lot of different ways you can do it, you know, from a very simple to a very exotic type of a framing where you have the uh, photos of the player in mm -hmm. it and so forth, as well as the jersey. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we, uh, you know, we can, you know, we can definitely take care of any type of jersey framing that's... Have you ever tried your hand in doing any custom like artwork yourself? Like as if you wanted to create and you're like, I got a vision for you, no worries, I'll do it. Have you tried your hand in that? And you're like, no, let me leave it to the artist. <laughs> <laughs> no, I really don't. I think we did create one piece mm -hmm. um, which had to do with... Uh, and, and I'll show you that in a little bit. I had a, a printer to create a piece that had to do with Katanji. When she when she took the judge the judgeship, and I'll show you the piece, uh, but it's it's pretty. I'm, I'm sure I have it here, but um, yeah. So we it's have an interesting piece. It was it's pretty interesting. Oh, yeah. I love that. Okay, so tell me before we take our break. Tell me about uh, time frames for the uh, custom framing. If I came in and I asked that same example, roughly how long do you think would take for the piece to be done? Well, normally we look at probably a couple. Uh, a uh, couple of days we can have it turned around but if we don't have the the materials in stock we have to order it mm -hmm. so you may be looking at about a week oh but yeah. that's quick in my yeah. opinion yes yeah. so <laughs> hand have, me a frame it's not gonna think that. Let's, let's say you have a frame you pick a frame from there and we don't have it in stock so we have to order it and i get a shipment on uh on wednesdays and fridays mm -hmm. and well tuesday wednesdays and friday so mm -hmm. you know i have to order it and then you know um and you know Sometimes that takes a minute. Yeah, no, but that 
in my opinion, I think that's fairly quick for a couple of days to a week mm -hmm. to frame something, especially if it's custom framing too. Mm -hmm. I think that's that's pretty quick. Yeah. <laughs> right. We also cut the mattings and everything. You know, you know, it's, it's pretty. Uh, it's it, interesting. It, yeah. I think I need to come back and watch you actually do one. I think uh, that'd be pretty cool. Okay. <laughs> well, folks, we're going to take a quick break. Don't go anywhere because I'll still have Arthur here with me telling a little bit more about all the art pieces, where they originate from, and where you can find him around town. Keep on watching, guys. I wonder if you know that I want the best for you. I know you're going through a lot. I wonder if you know that the big homie needs help too. That you can't just rebound from everything. I know you've been grinding. Let's go, let's go, let's go. But how long will you fight solo? I wonder if you know that we can get help. I wonder why we waited so long. wondering anymore. Love your mind. Let's see how far we can go. Folks, welcome back. I'm Ida Stamas, and you have been watching Talking with E. I'm sitting down with Arthur J. Pickney III. If you weren't here from the beginning, let me catch you up. This is an amazing place, <laughs> let me tell you. From the artwork, from the framing, there's so much detail that goes into us that you wouldn't even know. So Arthur told us a little bit about that. Now we're going to dive back into the art because it is phenomenal. So with your artwork, where does it mostly originate from? Well, most of our artwork throughout the years have been uh, American art. Mm -hmm. But probably about, I'm probably going to say seven, eight years ago, we started importing quite a bit from Africa. Okay. And the interesting thing for me about African art is that each African country specializes in a small home form of artwork. Mm -hmm. So we get uh, copper from Congo. We get woven silk thread from Ghana. Mm -hmm. We get uh, um, we get bamboo art from Zambia. Okay. We get art from uh, Kenya, mm -hmm. Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So we actually get art from quite a few countries. Oh uh, yeah. I get art from Egypt. So we have quite a get. A, quite a few different pieces from different countries. Gotcha. Now, are you discovering, well, not necessarily discovering these artists, but how do you even find them? Like, this art piece right here is absolutely beautiful. The mm -hmm. idea that someone is woving, wovening, I don't know the term, but uh -huh. <laughs> stitching art together, stitching thread together to make art is absolutely phenomenal, and it looks beautiful. Do you know who... That is in that. Yes, piece? I yes I do, and uh, I'll tell you what's interesting with modern technology today. I really didn't even find him; he found me. Oh wow! So I'm sitting here in the store one day, and the phone rings, and it was somebody from Africa. And he says to me, he says, "I got your website. I'm looking at your website. I see that you do have thread art, and um, you know I sell thread art here in Africa, and That's I'll send wild. you over." A bunch of things. I also have a brother-in-law who is an attorney. Well, he was an attorney for Pfizer, but he just recently started his own. Uh, um, he started his own firm, mm -hmm. and uh, he was going to Africa once a month. Mm. Oh wow! For eighteen years. That's one of the reasons why he wow. left because he thought it was just too much, and you know, too much going away or being away from home. Mm -hmm. But anyway, he was in Africa once a month, and he actually brought in a lot of pieces for me as I well bet. from Africa. I bet. So, you know, it's uh, it's pretty interesting. I think that's wild it that is. someone from Africa was like, hey, we're going to be fine. NJ Arts World right here in yeah. Union. Uh -huh. And it traveled across the world to get here to sit in someone's living room. That's yeah. beautiful. Yeah, it is. That is absolutely beautiful. Oh, man. So do you think you personally relate to any of your pieces here in your... I love it all. Mm -hmm. I love it all. And, you know, I get pretty excited. I think some of my favorites are 
Um, well, I have one piece over here. Uh, it's an African wood carving mm -hmm. with all of the uh, African countries inside of it. I have seen that one. And uh, I, I think it's absolutely devastating. It's a great conversation piece because mm -hmm. people like to tell you where they're going, mm -hmm. where they've been, and what their ancestral roots are. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and some people have really been all over Africa, so they can compensate on this piece all day. Oh, talk about <laughs> it all the time. Oh, I've never been here. You know what I had here? The best. The fish is the best over here. Like mm -hmm. I could, I could absolutely see it. So you said that one's your favorite. What about? I'm looking at this one here too, the Harriet Tubman piece. Tell me about that one. That's done by an artist who's also a friend of mine. I had a store in Philadelphia at one point. Uh, and Edwin Lester is from Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. But I was dealing with him a long time before I even got to store in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. uh, he is a great artist. Uh, one thing about that particular piece is he only made 300 of the edition itself. Mm -hmm. So it's once it's sold out, I think that piece started out with somewhere, the cost was somewhere in the neighborhood of I'm probably going to say two fifty to three hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Now, if you buy the the paper edition, it'll cost you like nine hundred dollars. Uh, this is actually a canvas edition, which is at the tail end of the edition, and there's only thirty of these. Oh wow! So that piece, I think it's on my website for like uh, eighteen hundred dollars. You but know what I really love about the art pieces? Every time you look at them you notice something different. You see something different, yeah. So you look at it in the grand scheme of things and you're like, wow, that's a beautiful piece. You look at something else, you come back to it. Because I remember the first time I saw it, I'm just looking at the overall piece of Harriet Tubman. And I think the first things that point out is yes, the gun on her shoulder and also the, um, the boat in the bottle. But then I look again, I didn't even notice the children in the water. Mm -hmm. I didn't notice the children in the water. I didn't notice that the water pouring out were actual bodies. You just notice different things. And it, I'm appreciative just getting to look at it. I think it's really cool and really amazing. How many artists do you think you have in your collection of art? I have quite a few artists. And like I said, this is just the tip of the iceberg, a lot of stuff you don't see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you know, but I'm probably going to say we may have 75, 80 artists. Um, you know, so, you know, it's pretty interesting. But it you were, to, to, just to reiterate on that on that Harriet piece, I sent this piece to a, a lady in North Carolina, mm -hmm. uh, a lady who's a very good good uh, art collector. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And she, she, she pointed out a lady with a baby in that picture that I never saw. See? So I called the artist and I said to him, I said, listen, I sent it to a lady in North Carolina and she's telling me about this lady with the baby. And what he did was he sent me a photo of it with the lady in the baby circles. <laughs> so, so, so I could go right to it and see exactly. <laughs> he said, this is what I was trying to say, but I didn't see it. Oh, wow. And I have been carrying this piece already for probably about five, six months, mm -hmm. actually looking at it mm -hmm. all the time. And you're standing there, where's the baby? Where's exactly, the exactly. Baby? So It's crazy. It is. And it's like you said, a great conversation starter. Have this in your living room, have this in the hallway, have this out in a building, the municipal, wherever, and people can just stand there and appreciate it. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. I absolutely love that. Okay, I'm like, now I'm mesmerized by all the pieces in here. Okay, so tell me, with having been here, you said you've been in Union for, what, 15 years now? Over 15, 15 years? 15 years, yeah. Yes. How do you try and stay connected with the community with your art? Because well, I know I've seen you around at different events, but I'd like for you to tell me, how do you think you stay connected? Well, uh, we do an event in Union, but we also, for the last 30 years, I've been doing events all around Union. We actually ship all over the country. As a matter of fact, I got a piece that's going to Ohio today. Oh, wow. Um, so we ship all over the country. Our website, um, most of the time, especially since the piece, as the pieces become more scarce, if you put the piece in Google, most of the time will come up. Oh, I love that phrase. So, yeah. So, so we ship all over. Um, you know, but I've been doing uh, Montclair African American Festival has been going on for over 30 years. Mm -hmm. uh, they used to have one down in PNC Art Center, which was the African American Festival there. We've been doing that. Mm -hmm. That stopped, I'm probably going to say, about 10 years ago. Okay. But prior to that, we were there every year. So I do a lot of uh, outdoor events. We're also 
uh, vendors for sororities, okay, aka Delta. Uh, you know, um, I'm thinking, you know, we're we're do a lot of events along with churches, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you know, so we're actually out there, and you know, I think a lot of I, I do want to reiterate that um, our union store does do mostly um, framing mm -hmm. where the art's being sold when we do these types of events. Mm, gotcha. So, you know, so we do have, we do have a quite an extensive framing. We do a lot of framing in union. We've done, we, we, we do museum framing. I've done framing for the, um, the union historical society. Okay. And they've had pieces dating back to the 1700s. They do. Where, um, that, that's really interesting where it has to be very carefully framed mm -hmm. and framed with type mm -hmm. of a material that it doesn't deteriorate. Mm -hmm. So you basically have to try to stop the deterioration, you know, where it is. Mm -hmm. I believe some of the pieces are in the bank. Oh, if I could remember the make. But the, yes, I know exactly which pieces mm -hmm. you're talking about for the Indian store. Yeah. It's crazy. It, no, it's, <laughs> it's, it's enjoyable. I, I really like I it. I bet. I think I, I chose the wrong field. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, guys. But, um, <laughs> but no, I think that's I think that's truly inspirational. The fact that you get to come here and do stuff that you really get to enjoy. You get to meet different people, especially for, with your framing. If it's art or if it's just um, mapping, it's great that you get to experience all of these different things. Knowledge is power. And let me tell you, I think this is the best place to grab that aspect. Okay, one of my last questions. What advice would you give a young entrepreneur who's, yes, it could be art, but any anyone looking to start their own business, especially in a field that they really do love and appreciate? What advice would you give them? Well, my thought is think twice before you do it. Mm. <laughs> uh, because any type of business that you have for yourself is not easy. Mm -hmm. you, you're everything and you're everybody. You know, you're the, uh, you know, you're the accountant. You're the person that does the product. Mm -hmm. you're the, you know, you're everything. You have to do everything. And there's really no such thing when you have your own business as a nine to five. Mm -hmm. A nine to five goes out of the window. Um, let's probably look at a 24 mm seven. -hmm. Uh, so, and you know, the more, uh, the more you, you grow, the more the work becomes. So my thought, my, my, my advice would be to think twice. And if you really love what you're doing, somebody told me you love what you do, you never have to work a day in your life. Okay. So, 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 so <laughs> I, I do, I, I love this business. And you know, that's why I've been in it so long. And I think it suits you so well, aren't you? <laughs> I think it really does. Okay, so let's share some contact information. How about you give me first the address here okay. for NJ Arts World. Okay, we're located on Vauxhall Road, 1925 Vauxhall Road, and that's in Union, New Jersey. Gotcha, hours of operation. We're here from 10 to six, uh, Monday through Friday, and from I'm sorry, we're here from 11 to 6, Monday through Friday, and we're here from 10 to 6 on Saturday. Okay, and then what about website? Social web media website. Our website is uh, njartsworld.com, mm -hmm. and we also have a presence on Instagram and Facebook at njartsworld. Gotcha. I'm going to have to follow that. <laughs> and phone number? 908-688-4955. Uh, all right, guys, listen here. The man has been in business for well over 30 years. The art here is beautiful. The personality, I'd say, is very enjoyable. I love that I came here and instantly off of our conversation, it was like an education lesson. And I love that because the more you learn, the more you know. So, Arthur, thank you so much for allowing me in here, allowing union in here to get to know you and NJ Arts World a little bit more. It was definitely a pleasure. And I thank you for coming. We appreciate you. This is a great township. I need to say that. Uh, <laughs> the, the, the people are fantastic. You know, everybody wants to do anything they can for everybody. And that's yep. what that's what makes union so fantastic. Yeah. You know, no matter what happens, you know, either in this election, 
I still feel that the love and union is still going to be here. I completely agree. I'm not from union, but I say that all the time. I love union. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will be one of the unionites soon, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> well, Arthur, thank you so much. It was a pleasure, like I mentioned. And everyone at home, thank you so much for watching. Please come on down to NJ Arts World. The art pieces, like I mentioned, will blow you away. Absolutely phenomenal. This has been a great time talking with E featuring Arthur J. Pickney, the third. I'm Edith Thomas, your host, and I'll catch you next time, guys. Take care. <laughs>